What's up, guys? It's Sean here. So I ended the 2025 college application cycle extremely happy and incredibly grateful with my decisions. And I just wanted to share kind of what I did to achieve those results, at least what I think. Uh, so for reference, I applied as a computer science slash data science slash statistics major, the specific major just varied by college and was accepted by schools like Stanford, UC Berkeley, out of state, Georgia Tech, Michigan, and UVA, which was my in-state school and more. So I'll go over everything from my stats to my activities and more. And keep in mind that we have videos or plan to post videos to address every part of the application to help you get into your dream school. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss out. And without further ado, let's get into the video. I'll start with the boring, but nevertheless important stuff, the stats. So I had a 4.0 unweighted, a 4.7 weighted. I wanted to add a quick disclaimer here that I went to a relatively large and easy public high school. So you could pretty much retake every test and quiz for a higher score. So it was really not that hard to get a 4.0. I know that a lot of other high schools are much harder to maintain 4.0 GPAs in, but the colleges will standardize your GPA. So don't worry too much. I also had a 1580 SAT with a 790 in either section. In terms of courses, I had taken and finished nine AP courses and their exams by the time I submitted my applications. I scored a five on all the exams and I'll list all the AP courses I took to the side. Also, if you'd like any personal help with any part of the application, we've got your back. You can meet one-on-one -on -one with us. We offer a lot of different plans. So if you're interested, just check out our website, which is linked down below. All right, moving on to the awards and activities. So my big activity that wasn't related to my major was playing the saxophone. I was section leader in my school jazz band, which was extremely successful and won many awards at the state and national levels. Uh, we participated in the National Jazz Festival every year. Perhaps more importantly, though, we hosted an annual charity performance. And over the course of four years, we actually raised over $20,000 for local nonprofits. I was also part of the jazz combo, which is essentially a smaller scale version of the jazz band with one person on a part. This was significant because it primarily was student led and the smaller scale meant that any awards we got or any achievements that we had were more significant and held more weight in the application. We won several state awards and also hosted events for Veterans Day as well as Christmas performances. At the individual level, I placed top five in the state for classical alto sax and second in the state for jazz alto sax. I really think that this shows the importance of depth. Playing saxophone was something I did all four years of high school, and I think it really reflected in the application. I ended up using it for two of my activity slots, jazz band to emphasize the community outreach, and jazz combo to emphasize the high placements and achievements, and my fifth honor slot, my second chair placement in the all-state jazz ensemble. Plus, I used those skills to submit a music portfolio, which... To be honest, I don't know if that really helped me or not, but it gives another chance to impress the admissions committee. Okay, now let's move on to my more major related activities and honors. And I'll start off sort of from the lower end ones and I'll move up. So I was part of and eventually co-led an FTC robotics team at my high school. And in that time, I helped lead my team to a regional championship and qualify for the state competition, which although really impressive for my school, since we don't get too many resources, isn't that impressive in the grand scheme of things. The main point I actually emphasized when talking about my robotics experience was creating a program to teach local Girl Scout troops how to code, which was really popular and fun. And we actually ended up connecting with quite a few troops in our area. We also went to nearby middle schools to help out with their FLL programs. Moving on to one of my awards, which was winning the Congressional App Challenge. I was in a group with two others and we basically just created an app and submitted it to a competition. Ours ended up being a disease diagnoser based on user inputted symptoms, and so it was more natural language processing based. I was responsible for the backend machine learning model and learned quite a bit about NLP. Uh, we even got to meet our congressman when receiving the award, but yeah, I think this competition is actually super great and underrated. It's not really that well known compared to like some of the bigger ones like the science fair. If you're not in too competitive a region, there's 
a chance there aren't even that many projects and your prospects of placing well in the app challenge become pretty good. And you don't have to work with any AI complicated integration either. I've seen plenty of scheduling or habit tracking apps win their region. And really, it is a really good solid award. I also, like many, many other kids, participated in the science fair. So in my 10th grade year, I created a program to quantify cell images, which won some awards in the regional and state levels. I remember being so disappointed because in the regional competition, they chose two people, the top two, to move straight on to ICEF, which is the international competition and the highest level. I thought I got pretty close, but ultimately came up just a little short. However, a couple days later, I received an email from one of the judges at the fair who actually happened to work at a local nonprofit, and he invited me to come visit and actually offered me a summer internship as they had some related work to what I had previously been studying. For privacy reasons to that foundation, I won't discuss the specific project, but just note that it involved machine learning, which really closely aligned to my intended major. However, back then, I really didn't know too much about the subject, so I was literally in that foundation day in and day out every day of the summer, slowly chugging along, learning little by little. In the end, I made really solid progress on that project, which prompted my boss to transfer it to a group of data science master students at a local university. Working with them, we were really able to escalate that project to the next level, which ended up producing a symposium paper that we presented, as well as ultimately a publication into a peer-reviewed journal under my push. My attitude was literally to just keep pushing the project as deep as it could go, always thinking, what's the next step? What's the next level? Now, I don't have time to go through all of my essays little by little, but I'll give a general overview of my Common App essay. So do comment below if you'd eventually like to see a more specific essay video. Um, so for my common app essay, my theme was curiosity, since I thought it reflected my desire to always take things to the next level and continuously learn in the process. I started off with a short story about performing magic tricks for my grandpa, and that even when literally everyone else I performed to would just, you know, do the whoa and clap and just be amazed at what I did, he wasn't like that. He just continued to make me perform that magic trick like 10 times until he slowly figured it out. I then connected that attitude of I must know to my events in high school, referencing the activities I mentioned in the previous section of this video. Okay, now moving on to my recs. I felt that my consistently active participation in my classes made my teachers generally like me. I'd say I particularly kept my biology teacher, who by the way is literally my favorite person in the world, updated on what I did because it aligned with the general direction of some of his previous research as well. He used to work at a university. As a result, he wrote me a really strong letter of recommendation. I also became close with my 11th grade English teacher, as well as my counselor, whom I'm frequently popped in to chat with. Again, as I mentioned in my other video, this building of relationships took place all four years of high school, which I think put me on the good side of a lot of teachers. My recs, therefore, were strong, but I don't think they were anything exceptional or out of the ordinary. Pretty much the takeaway here is to just get a couple of teachers to like you, and you're good. Okay, then that's just about going to do it for this video. If you learned something, consider leaving a like and subscribing to our channel. Also, leave any questions down in the comments and we'll get to them as soon as we can. And so stay tuned for more videos and see ya!